So this video is for the people that watch my channel that have uh, RVs or uh, DC systems in their house. So I want to look at this, uh, I've got a Raspberry Pi 4 and then a Victron BMV 712. This is a smart version with the uh, Bluetooth on it, but uh, you don't necessarily need the Bluetooth because uh, this thing here has Bluetooth. But, and it's a web server and it does Wi-Fi and uh, copper Ethernet. And uh, so this is the shunt that goes with it for measuring your current. You put that on the negative. And then I've just temporarily got it hooked up to a power supply. So I've got one of the B terminals going to the positive on this power supply. And then I just use the uh, extra wire to put a, a ground on one of the uh, battery measuring terminals. So if you want to run the uh, Venus software on a Raspberry Pi, one, you'll need to buy it. This has got uh, one gig of memory in it and it uses like a, a micro SD card or something with the Raspberry 4. I think with the older Raspberry Pis they used like uh, bigger connectors all the way around like bigger SD card and this one's got like a tiny little HDMI connector and then it uses USB-C for the power but anyway and then this has got a little metal heat sink attached to it. But uh, to load up the software you're going to go to uh, this website here. I'm doing this really uh, low tech to show you the high tech. So anyway, you go there, you download the Raspberry Pi uh, imager. You can download it right there, put it on your Mac or whatever you're going to run. Then you're going to uh, go to this website here and uh, pick the hardware you've got and download it. You can So this is Raspberry Pi 4. I think you can get it from GitHub in different places as well. So you're just going to grab the uh, look at the dates and then grab the uh, zip file, the GZ. It's uh, newest. There's something on here about Venus OS Large. I haven't played with that yet but it looks kind of interesting. Looks like you can do like graphical programming with it, with uh, block diagrams, and it gives you more menu stuff. Anyway, so this thing is currently running. So all you do is like you put in your SD card into your computer. You use the uh, Raspberry Pi OS to uh, burn the image that you downloaded here onto the SD card. Take it out of your computer, you put it in here, and then you just turn it on, and it works. It's amazing. So uh, it's plugged into the network right now. That's the easiest way to do it. If you did uh, have Wi-Fi only, it's probably a bit more effort. But anyway, you'll see that it shows up on the network. You can go to venus.local. Or you can go to this IP address uh, right here. So it's simply working. If you use the escape button, you can flip the two pages here. You go down here, you can go into the menu. You can go into some settings. The uh, scroll button doesn't work, so you have to go down. The VRM is interesting in that this. VRM, if you're online, it will publish your data to the internet and you can see it from anywhere. You've got internet, which is kind of neat. I do not have I.O. options on here other than uh, relays, which I thought was unusual. So anyway, you can go in for Wi-Fi. Eventually it'll bring up a list, but I've got it turned off. So I'm using this kind of like as a headless display. Like I don't, I do have an HDMI cable connected to it, but you don't need it. I'll just flip my TV over to uh, HDMI, and we can take a look at it. It's just a Linux or Linux uh, command prompt that you're going to see. It's got Victron Energy here a couple times. There's really nothing to it. You don't need it. Like you can go and buy a, a display to attach to your Raspberry Pi, 
but if you just use it on a web browser that's good enough in my opinion so anyway you can hit I just typed in reboot there's no login or password or anything so the system's gonna reboot here quick and you can just see what it looks like but again you'll never need to look at it so before it reboots it needs to get its house in order kinda so here I am that's pretty quick didn't even get to focus on it throws this thing up on the screen and uh, once the uh, command line comes up this thing is good to go So while waiting for that, I also did buy a, uh, a USB cable. It's up now. I'll give a link to this in case you're interested in it. So this USB cable plugs into the VE Direct on the back of here and uh, allows this data to go on here. And then it can become Modbus, which is where it starts to get interesting. So. Uh, I'll just uh, flip this thing back onto uh, HDMI 1 and it's uh, probably got a new IP address. You probably, like I said, type in Venus.local. I just ignore the news here for a second. It's not really the point of what we're doing. I don't have the keyboard connected to the computer. All right, that's all right. So uh, Venus.local would have worked up in here. Or you can use this. Or you can use the Victron Connect on the uh, tablet. Um, we'll maybe play with the tablet later, but uh, this is good enough for now. So anyway, you go into settings, go into services. I have Modbus TCP enabled for uh, what I want to do. And there's going to be a unit ID. So there's uh, this unit ID in com.victronenergy.system gives you a certain number of Modbus registers, which aren't very interesting. They don't have the date and time or anything, but hey, I'll probably have to cut this video and show that spreadsheet in another way because it's kind of hard to find and I don't have it ready to go. But now I'm going to turn on the power supply here. This one is a uh, tech power and it's good for quite a bit of current, like 30 amps or something. Not continuous, but it's pretty good. So I'll turn it on. This needs to be programmed in order to work correctly. But anyway, let's see if this, how fast this thing picks it up. Very fast. It's online. So this is Modbus uh, unit ID 239 for that guy. And it gives you this other uh, list of Modbus registers. We go back. You can see that this device list has changed a bit in that it, it's got a device on it now. So it's got the voltage and the amps. Obviously there's no current going through it. I can set this to like 13.8 volts or what I can do is I can uh, adjust the potentiometer on here. So it's at like 9.62. I can go down eight volts. I can max it out. 15.2 volts, 0.3. Which one's calibrated? I don't know. They're off by a point one volts. That's under ten percent. Under yeah of course. One point five. Yeah so it's it's not very much. It's like one percent that it's off by I think. Um, you can go into it, you can set the amp hours of the battery and 
or that's the consumed information there. I should probably turn it down. It probably doesn't like that. Give it. Yeah, 12 volts. That's kind of normal. You can view the uh, relay state. Let's see if we can go further down. Yes. So that's why you need to use these buttons here to go down. Device. Product ID, firmware. VRM information, serial number. I guess, like I said, the video is just sort of to show you how easy it is. It doesn't need to be overly in-depth. Modbus TCP IP devices. So that's something I'm going to be doing is adding my AC power meter to this because it communicates over Modbus TCP over Ethernet. And uh, I want to share my AC and my DC data together on a web page. So my camper is not in the bedroom, obviously. So I don't have it online right now. No notifications. Um, let me see if we can get this tablet going. Yeah, it's good to go. I was just doing some updates on it. I assume I have the software installed on this thing. What is it called? I guess it's possible it is not. All right, perfect time for me to uh, stop recording. I will get the software installed, and then we'll also look at the uh, spreadsheet. All right, so we've got Victron Connect uh, installed on this Android tablet. I don't have VRM set up, but you can go on here, connect to the device. It's gonna be hard for this camera to focus on a piece of glass. It wants a pin number, which is interesting. I guess we'll try all zeros. Oh, it's six zeros. So it's trying to pair with that. I don't know why it's doing that. But we'll go along with it. Alright, so it wants me to update it. Might as well. Hopefully we don't brick it. Not much going on. Alright, while that's doing that, I did find the... Uh, spreadsheet with all the Modbus registers. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to read the serial number off of the uh, Raspberry Pi and then try to get some data off of it. So it's a bit of a nonsense to find this thing. When you go to the Victron Energy web page, click on Downloads, then click on the Technical Information tab, then click on the Modbus TCP register list, then you got to put in your email address and these freaking people email you a link that's good for three days. Then you got to download it. This computer doesn't have Excel installed on it. So then you got to take that file and email it to yourself so that you can view it through like Gmail or something. It's a ridiculous pain in the ass. But anyway, it's doable. So the firmware is up to date. Continue there. Of course, you would look at changing your uh, unbelievable. 
Now I gotta update the firmware on that thing. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that. Um, so, if you want to read Modbus data, you'll need a program like Modbus Pull. You get some details here on downloading it. So I downloaded 64-bit version, installed it on the computer. You're going to need to know a couple things. You're going to need to know your IP address, so we're going to copy that. Then we are going to... Uh, what is this thing up to? Oh, that's annoying. There. Go into uh, settings. I already turned on Modbus under services. You have to enable it. And you go down to available services. So we're going to go to unit ID 100 at that IP address with Modbus pull. So this is only going to let you uh, play for a few minutes. I'm going to connect. You don't have a password or a key. That's okay. Now. All right, yeah, so I should have went to connection connect. So here we're going to go Modbus TCP IP. We're going to go IP version 4. If you had IP version 6, that would be okay as well. Server port 502 is standard. What is going on here? Yeah, so I got the IP version 4, port 5 or 2, got the IP address, so we're good to go. Then we are going to uh, right click here and refresh my memory on how to do this. Alright, you click, uh, you right click on here and go to read write definition. Slave ID is 100. And uh, we know that at PLC address 40801, which is 800, we're going to scan like six registers. Hit apply. We have got some numbers. So let's go and take a look at what these numbers are. So at 800, there are 12 characters, so there's six strings you can download to get the serial number. And then there's some uint values. So let's go. and read 8. Right, so these two values here are the relays that would be in the uh, this thing here. So take a look at that. 0 is open, 1 is closed. You can toggle these, but it's only on the Venus GX. I don't think you can do it with Raspberry Pi necessarily. But anyway, we're able to read those registers there. If you needed to, you could change the format of this value. Say if it was uh, hex ASCII, 
you can change it to whatever it is they tell you in the table what you're looking for. So that is that and uh, we could also take a look at what is in the uh, BMV. So it's comvictronenergy.battery. Dot battery. So I could start looking at uh, looks at like uh, address 259. Sometimes there's gaps in them, which is a bit of a nuisance. It looks like I can grab maybe uh, 10 at a time. Let's see how many we can get. And I gotta remember where we're at. So ID 239. This program is only good for uh, 10 minutes and it's going to flake out. I forgot which address I'm looking for. registers 259 all right 239 259 that was kind of mixing me up I'm gonna grab 10 registers we're not getting anything of interest no connection I think we timed out so we're gonna save all that shut that down Start Modbus pull again. Connect. What did it just do? I clicked on order. It's got the same IP address. If this thing rebooted, you'd probably have to check a new IP address, but that never happened. Illegal address. So I'm trying to read the wrong thing here. Yeah, so I need 239, that's right. 259, apply. So now I'm getting some values. So I got a three, and I got a thousand, and a 1253. So that's scaled. So you, sometimes there's scaling numbers you have to use to put the decimal in the correct location which would be like the battery voltage or something. Let me see. So 259 plus nine. Oh, this is complicated. But anyway, it's if you got to figure out which uh, spot we're at. 250, yeah, it's 259, okay. 259 is battery voltage, exactly. So you look at it, the scale factor is 100. So you need to divide it by 100 to get the correct number, and it gives you the range. So I think that is about all we're going to show you today. We'll take a look here. I don't know if I showed you or not, but like it shows you some battery information and whatnot in here. It shows it here. So my intent is to collect Modbus data for the AC input and display it in here and uh, to make a, a complete package. You can also buy AC power meters from Bigtron if you want to go that route, but I decided not to. So hopefully you found that interesting and somewhat helpful. Thank you for watching. All right, I forgot that we were uh, working on updating the firmware on this thing. So we didn't brick it. Let's see if we can get into it this time. No, my camera battery is dying. So they want me to change my pin code. I'm going to say not now. So it gives you voltage and whatnot. This is going Bluetooth. This is not going through the Venus OS.
And uh, if you open this in a browser, it'll knock out your other browser. So it'll knock it out on this computer. Yeah, so it went down here, but uh, I happened to crash my little tablet here. But let's give it another shot. Try to focus. Yeah, so it's on here now. So there's lots of different ways you can connect to this with the browser, the VRM software, all kinds of ideas. But anyway, again, uh, thanks for watching.